morning, everybody. CW here. Day seven for me of this 10 guns in 10 days challenge. So we're getting down to the down to the short strokes here. I, uh, I've got a couple more that I want to do. So uh, seven, this will leave me uh, this will leave me just two after this. And I think I can just do the the last two. I probably had three that I wanted to add, but I wanted to get this one in because I I want to try and go handgun rifle or you know handgun long gun and uh, trying to pick out my favorites and trying to pick out less uh, common firearms to show you guys that you may not not see or not regularly see at least and uh, I'm hoping the last two fit that bill I may do a double on one of the last ones because uh, there's, there's there's just a couple more that I really want to share. Anyway, let's get to this one. So this is the 10 Guns in 10 Days Challenge from Treetop, uh, Treetop Outdoors, Timmy. And uh, what an awesome idea. I wish I'd have got involved last year. But frankly, 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 that's not a word. Frankly, I would have probably had the same guns because uh, I'm just uh, not really purchasing these days with uh, with my knee and such. I've got limited, limited uh, extra funds, so... If I pick up something, I got to sell something. Anyway, so let's talk about this one. This is a Ruger single nine. And the Firearms Addict uh, yesterday did one on the single 10, which is the long rifle version. The single nine is the 22 Magnum version. And uh, as I've said to you in these videos, I'm a, I'm a 22 Magnum nut. I, I just love the 22 Magnum. And uh, I've, I've owned so many 22 Magnums. And, uh, you know, some of them I get rid of they're, they're, they're bought because of the caliber and they don't turn out to be quite what I wanted or didn't work out the way I expected them to. And, uh, I moved them along, but, uh, some of them really stuck and will stick and will always be there. And there's a couple more that are on my radar that I really would like to, uh, to pick up one day. But this one here was bought the day I learned about it or the day after I learned about it. I called up my local gun shop and they had one in stock and I told them put it in the back counter I'll be down and I went down there and I bought it I bought this uh, just before Thanksgiving <clears throat> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say October end of end of October beginning of November so actually if I remember correctly this was this was a birthday gun for myself my birthday is in the beginning of November I think I bought this for my birthday for myself Anyway, bought it, brought it home, went through it all, cleaned it all, hosed it all out, just like I do with all my new guns. Um, and I installed a free spin pawl in here. And if you don't know what that is, on the single actions, when you open them up to uh, to uh, uh, unload them or to do it, oh, this is a new model. Here are the clicks. You get clicks and you can't go backwards. You can't go backwards. So if you go too far with one of the clicks, it doesn't line up for the ejection. So with a free spin pawl, as soon as you open the gate, this spins both directions and there's no clicks. So it's much easier to load, much faster to load and unload, no more problems. And on some of the guns, like the 327, it's really helpful because the 327 was built on this same frame and the bullet is fatter. It's only 32, but it's much fatter than a 22. And this ge geometry here of this gate size doesn't lend itself with the rim of the case very well. And the first ones, the 32 h &R mag, the first ones were actually hard to load sometimes because of this. They, they just, they bound with the rim going by here. And they can only relieve so much, take out so much material uh, number one, it doesn't become cost-effective because they've got to do specific frames, which is half the reason for doing them on this frame because they didn't have to do another frame. And secondly, um, the, the cost. You know, they have the cost. They have to do hand work on, on each of these guns. And that just sends the price out, out of the market for, for most folks. So uh, the free spin Paul lets you move things back and forth a little when you, when you load, and it, it lets it index uh, slide in there much easier. 
um, on cartridges like the 22 where you got plenty of room, it just makes it faster because you don't have to worry about misaligning or missing a missing one. So if you're going through and injecting all your cases and you miss one, well, yeah, you got to go all the way back around to get it. And with a free spin pull, you don't. In putting that free spin pull in, it wouldn't work. I couldn't make it work. And what I found out was there's a spring on the bottom of the the, the hand that comes up here in the, I'm sorry, the pole that comes up here on the cylinder stop or the cylinder stop, whatever you want to call it. At the factory, they had jammed two springs or broken a spring and there was a partial spring and they put another spring on top of it. So I couldn't get the free spin pole to work. And when I took it apart to figure out why, I found that. So I stopped, took it back out, put it back together, brought it back into the gun shop. This is going to be a few days before Thanksgiving. And you'll see the reason for me telling you all this in just a minute. Um, put it back in the box, brought it back to the, to the store and told me, you got to send this back to Ruger. There's something wrong with it. Um, the timing is an issue and it's not working with the, with the cylinder stops. So they sent it back a couple days before Thanksgiving. And I figured it's going to be next year you know, the following year before I get it, because we got Thanksgiving and then we got Christmas and then we got New Year's and a lot of, a lot of gun shops shut down for that week between Christmas and New Year's. And, uh, they certainly have vacations and, and, you know, less people involved. So, uh, I pretty much just sent it, brought it in, sent it in, sent it, had them sent it out and forgot about it. Well, the week after Thanksgiving, literally days after Thanksgiving, I get a call, your gun's back. It had been out for like 10 days literally 10 days from when I dropped it off till they called me to come pick it up. Ruger jumped on this over a holiday, fixed it and sent it back to me. I had already been a Ruger fan, but that pretty much cemented me for life as, as a Ruger fan. Um, I don't mind the mistakes. Mistakes happen. They make a lot of guns. Um, yeah, it shouldn't have gone out, but it did function. It did physically work. It just didn't work correctly. So I have no no ill feelings against them because of that or any other company. That's That just happens sometimes. It's when it continually happens that there's an issue or when or when that company's uh, customer service falls down. And that's when you really see the metal that a company is made from um, when you have to use their customer service or you see their offerings of warranties and such. Um, it's it's really, really uh, cemented me to, to Ruger. So what we got here? So I'm going to make this a 20 minute video before I even realize it. These are stainless steel guns. They're nine shot cylinders. Um, I removed the front sight because I put a, this is called a Wigatini, Wigatini, Wigan, um, firearms, Wigan, I forget their name. They make this base. It's a no gunsmithing base that can be drilled and tapped. It has provisions in the top. To drill extra holes through your top strap to screw this on with a rim fire there's no reason to it uses the um adjustable rear sight screw to to cement it down you know to tighten it down and the tolerances are extremely tight on the frame so you put this on without a screw it doesn't move <laughs> it's it's a really nice base and they make different ones if you saw my video on the on the blue 22 mag that one's got a, a mini wiggy, or a, a, they may not call it that. They have a name for it, mini something. And it's literally as long as the frame, so it's that long. This is the longer version. I I just did it. I didn't. I, it turns out that it worked out good because I wanted to put this this old school aim point on here. This is an aim point 3000. Um, don't be afraid of buying these guys if you see them used. The 3000s, even the 2000s, um, the 5000s, they were awesome awesome quality dots for what they are um yeah they're a little bigger yeah they're a little fugly but they work they have a really nice crisp dot they're solid 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 you're not gonna you can put this on anything you put it on 458 winchester mag it's gonna hold up fine they're great dots so don't be afraid of buying these used and you can get them for you know 100 bucks 75 bucks you can get these cheap and they're way better than anything you're gonna spend that same exact amount of money for brand new from virtually anybody else you know a hundred dollar dot you're not going to be anywhere near the quality 
that this that this dot is it's just older anyway put it on there one screw lock tight it down i had these grips from a couple other rugers that i had had in the past and i really like this gun it shoots really really good off a of rest i can probably be out of the nine shots i bet i can be seven to eight on a tennis ball at 50 yards and uh that's that's pretty good so you could literally hunt with this um, without any problem and I have I've taken coyotes with this it's just a really really nice pistol revolver these are eagle grips and today's market they probably cost most of what the gun cost they're not super pretty ones but they're 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 nice they're nice grips I really like them and they're thicker so I've got a I've got a bigger hand and they fit they fit really nice. So there we go. There's my seventh installment. My Ruger Single 9. I hope you guys enjoy it. I really hope that you're tuning in to everybody else that's doing these videos. Because we got a whole bunch of great guys. There's a couple new guys that have come on. Um, Treetop, of course, Timmy is one that started at Treetop Outdoors. We got Mark Thomas. We got Boomstick779. Rob Hamilton over Hamilton Arms. Nibs over at Walnut and Steel. Six Shooter Texan started doing them. Now he's going to just come on like gangbusters. I just was talking to, or I listened to his video and he's going to do like four or five. Um, he did them yesterday. So they'll be, they'll be coming out. I don't know if he's going to do them one a day or if he's going to release a couple a day or what he's going to do to, to catch up. Not that there's really any reason to catch up. Um, you know, you can just do them one a day. It's fine. I'm sure. Uh, this is a, uh, this is just something to promote, you know, camaraderie and and uh bring stuff to uh to, to online and 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 bring everybody uh you know on the same boat and introduce you to new channels and you know it's it's uh just a camaraderie thing and it's a great idea by timmy and then uh like i said six shooter texan is is newer he's just starting to do it firearms addict picked it up he's uh he's pretty good um with his count i think he's uh i think he's up to five or so nicholas family has been doing it from the beginning i i didn't sign on to him but i i subbed him and he's got some great videos and yesterday i saw gun wild started to do them so that's great that's that's absolutely great and uh, he did a nice video and then uh 8g discovery is a is a new guy i'm sub to and uh, he's got some good videos so uh take a look at these guys and uh, uh give him a sub or Check them out. They got some neat guns and some neat videos. So that's about it for this one, guys. God bless everybody. CW out.